let's get started. Let me do I remember how to do show an archive intro? I, I quick pull up a YouTube video. Okay. That's that's a good idea. Let's go look up uh dun dun dun, dun upload videos. Da da ba dum go to Shonen Archive. Uh Gintama that's right, it was episode fifty was the last one. Okay. It starts with the musical intro. Oh thank god I put in New York as our fifth Oh our Yo GX and I hate hearing myself. And today Oh, and then there is actually a new God, why do I jump? talk so fucking much? Can you just say the goddamn intro of the <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wokey, and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series dedicated to watching absolutely every single Shonen Jump anime that is available to us. That is possible for us to watch. Oh, by the way, there's been updates. They are, they're so close to finding the JoJo movie, Zen. I've heard yeah. that we might be graced with Horrible, horrible things. Man. We might be able to get somewhat some random dude in Japan just uploaded it, and for like twenty minutes, it was a grab bag of people like going for the download link. So, so, so now we know it's out there. Now we just need to wait for someone to actually upload it again, so that someone who knows how to translate it to, to, to English can get it into our hands. But it's coming there. It's coming along. And me and Zen plan to do this until the end of the universe itself, or the end of us, ourselves. Which, I, that's not happening, though. We plan to live forever. We plan to become etern eternal AIs by the end of this. Could you actually imagine if the show did continue with us as AIs? It would actually be really funny if we did, like, an April Fool's episode that was entirely AI-generated. <laughs> <laughs> it would be. It would be like, all right. All right, that's something we we'll have to think about. This is an AI generated show archive for a random series that we both have never watched. <laughs> Just no idea what it is. All right, someone has to cover the Sandland. So here you go, <laughs> AI us talks about Sandland. Oh my god, that would be amazing. Oh, that would be amazing. Look out for it on April Fools if the technology has come well, around. Yeah. and <laughs> look, look out for it in <laughs> ten months. Boom, baby. And yeah, we're back. We took a long break because a lot of stuff happened. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff going on. Life went hard for a while. It, it it went a little difficult. Yes, it did. It did. But thankfully, we're back. I never forgot about it. I just didn't give up any like saying like, hey, here's what we're going to be doing. Because at a certain point, I'm just like, we're going to come back to this. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> but, uh, Thank thankfully, we are so back. Yeah, we are so back, baby, and we're here to talk about... We are more back than we've ever been. Yes, and I'm really excited because we were left off right before we were... We had planned out for this huge, big arc that's coming to Gintama pretty soon here, and we're not there yet. We have to talk about these five episodes first! Yeah, we have to fight through these so uh, that, that's over dramatic isn't it? it is over dramatic it is it is a it is a weird batch of five episodes i think it, it's fair yeah, to say they weren't that bad but man i could have it, you know it, gone for it, some better ones that's for sure for a return it was a definite yes this is the series i remember it was basically like coming back and saying yes. ah yes truly nothing has changed this sure is gintama this sure is, that woman sure is being mistreated in a way that makes me go you know what let's talk about this a little bit more <laughs> when the actual episode comes out uh because i think it was okay okay let's go zen are you ready we're gonna start with episode 124 the name of this title is when nagging goes too far it becomes intimidating go ahead zen try and tell so, us what this is about yeah try is a good word here so uh <laughs> Otsuchan has uh, become extremely popular. Um, they go to to get like a new song release, 
and uh, the, the, they don't have it. Like, I don't remember the exact reason if, it, if it's just if it's not the, done. The reason is, is that that dude that got, uh, hit, how could you not remember? They say it like three times. The dude that Gin, uh, Gintoki oh, beat wait, up in the helicopter. Gintoki crashes his helicopter. <laughs> yeah, he said he hurt his arms. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. Back in the previous arc, yeah, he crashes his helicopter. Um, and so she tries to make a song on her own and can't do it. And so she has like a crisis of faith in her own abilities for a while. Um, and she ends up coming back and performing a new song. And it just still isn't, isn't what she wants. Um, and then I think everyone like shows up and helps her like emotionally write this song. And there's an extremely long number that they do. Yeah, uh, the, the... and they perform it in concert, and the whole song is called uh, "Who." It's like "Who gives a shit about broadcast uh, regulation?" Oh, this song can't be broadcasted on. It can't be broadcasted. It is filled with nothing but words that can't be yeah, put on it's TV. Like occasional words, and then just like the bleep noise over and over again. Yeah, and I think the the subtitles were also edited. It sure looked and like every, it. Every bleep was in like brackets. Yeah, it seemed like it was a lot. There was so much going on in this short for this gag. And then they play that song over the opening <laughs> animation. Which plays which 18 really minutes funny. in. Yep. Uh, and then it, the, it also ends with, just to, to wrap it up here, it ends with, because this entire episode is like framed like a specific documentary from, like, I, I assume, like a documentary series from Japan. I, f- I forget the name of it. They have, let me see, Slightly Feverish Continent, a parody of The Passionate Continent, a Japanese documentary program. So it's told, like, in a doc. And then at the end, they start saying, like, oh, yeah, next time on this, here's one. And then they have, like, documentaries about, like, Prince Hada, the guy who made the Just Away dolls <laughs> bomb, the, the terrorist the guy. The Prince Hada one's funny because it's, like, the man whose kindness reaches every yeah. animal. <laughs> that one was funny. And yeah, and then, and then it ends with them on in the classic shot of them at home saying like, "All right, good job, everyone. <laughs> we're ending, by the way. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're we're in the middle. Oh, there was a Kimpachi sensor where they talk about um, season three. That's right. They say like he starts the conversation with Alien one and two are great, but three was horrible. And then uh, I cried in T two when uh, Schwachon, which is what they call Schwarzenegger, apparently in Japan." <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing which is amazing anyway the world is structured in a way that the third one always fails and uh of course everyone knows that logan is the one exception it's literally impossible it's the greatest of the wolverine trilogy <laughs> by a large amount yes uh, but, but then they start trying to throw holes in this entire thing. We always like uh, Kondo says like wait what about uh, home alone 2 that was terrible how do you explain that and uh, Gintoki's like, Macaulay Culkin completely got carried away, and he made a two into a three. <laughs> <laughs> he, goes, he goes fucking hard on Macaulay Culkin. He's just like, oh, yeah, he's like, oh, check out my face. Isn't that enough? He totally ruined Home Alone 2. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, damn, this feels like more like the author-specific problem with Home Alone 2. <laughs> And then they said, what about Dragon Quest Three? That's universally agreed to be one of the greatest. He was like, ah, no, no. One of the dudes in there, uh, he went so hard at it, it turned a three into a four. It's like, that doesn't make sense with what you said previously. What, what, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> but <laughs> but they say, like, oh, yeah, basically, we're in our third season. Uh, this is It's all downhill from here. <laughs> Which I appreciate them saying... Even though we both know there's about 200 more episodes of this series to go through. Yeah, well, I don't know, like, if... Because I know it's had, like, troubled development. So I don't know if they actually did, like, do something here. I, I feel like... Not. I think back, I, I don't know. I think this is something that the actual Gintama people can tell us. Because I do remember there was, like... There's going to be a break where it goes from... It was released... Because this is in 2009. And then it's, like, it doesn't come back until, like, 2014 or something. <laughs> like, there's a large gap of years, if I if I remember correctly. But, again, Damn. the actual people who were there and were able to experience it live can tell us. But it sure seems like at any given time, Gintama was real close to just, like, losing yeah, its time slot and also yeah. just being cancelled. 
So, that was this episode. Uh, here's my thoughts about that. I like any uh, parody of a documentary. I love documentaries, then. I think it might actually be one of my favorite genres to just gonna kind of like sit back and watch. So I like also almost any parody of a documentary, <laughs> and this felt pretty nice with that, where they started documenting her life, and they also show, like, all the crazy things she's done. They were also giving a lot of context to stuff that previously, like, remember when we saw her in the boxing ring, and we were like, what the hell? Why is she here? And they're like, oh, no, this is when, after the scandal broke, and she was down on her luck, and she had to go do all this other stuff. <laughs> it's like, that's why she was here, is because her star had fallen so hard, and now she's she's basically back on top, and she's ready to do it. I thought that was really nice. It's been... I also like that at one point she starts going, like, is the real issue here is the fact that I haven't been on an... Like, <laughs> I haven't been on an episode in, like, over a hundred or so. <laughs> like, it had been an extremely <laughs> long time since we last actually had her in an episode, I think. I think it was the Shinsengumi one. It was the last time oh, we yeah, saw her. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. You're right, yeah. Which also gets referenced here because the, the, the mascot of the Shinsengumi, which is the, the centaur who killed a person... <laughs> Uh, it shows, he shows up, Yutoki shows up dressed up as him, and he's, she's like, oh my god, Centaur, Corpse John! <laughs> and and with Kagura as the corpse, which is really funny. Um, yeah, and I also like a lot of the weird song parody stuff she does, and all the weird things that she does. In general, I always have a decent enough time whenever she comes in. She's definitely a character that can't actually be in the main cast. <laughs> Because she probably would be get very overwhelming if she was. But, you know, every once in a while, checking up on her and seeing what she's doing, I think is uh, perfectly okay with me. Uh, that and I think her song titles, which are like... Is, is it on? No, it's in the next episode where they talk about it. But her song titles are as weird as the actual naming conventions of the series itself. <laughs> with a lot of yeah. the stuff she comes up with. Uh, like, I like that bit where she's, like, trying to hype up the restaurant with, like, a, like, a collab that she was doing. It's like, how come nobody's going in there? It's like, because the name of the restaurant is, like, the Corn Poop Special. <laughs> like, nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to come in here. Um, I also like there was a reoccurring bit here with, uh, Homeless Musashi. Where he keeps asking, but is it edible? Like, they keep asking him a question about, like, how do you feel about her potentially releasing the song? He's like, I think the important thing here to ask is, is it edible? And he says that, like, three times. <laughs> Until finally he gets to use it with an actual th- a food thing, which is when they ask him about, like, would you eat at a restaurant like this? He's like, I think the important thing to ask here is, is it edible? <laughs> <laughs> And he's also one of the people that they were going to do a documentary for at the end, I remember. That was the third. It was him, Prince Hada, and uh, the Just Away guy. It's so funny that the Just Away guy was one of them. It is. I love uh, the Just Aways. <laughs> the, the, I like them showing up in random places and in general. Yeah, where there's no need for them to be. Just Yeah, there's no need for a Just Away doll to be in this scene. But you know what? We put one in the background here. And I love them every single time they show up. And yeah, I really like that bit where they keep cutting back to the Shinsengumi crisis arc, where they're just like, uh, yeah, uh, my helicopter came crashing down by like a spiky, wavy haired idiot or something. Like, he, he crashed my helicopter. Yeah, someone with naturally wavy hair. <laughs> yeah, and they get. my helicopter. Yeah, and then they just play the footage over and over and over again, which <laughs> is really funny. And yeah, I thought it was a pretty decent way to just get back in here and get like, okay, yes. This is Gintama. I re- <laughs> this is 100%. It sure is Gintama, all right. Let's go. How'd you feel, Zen? Uh, it's good. My my thoughts were kind of the same where it was very much just like, "Oh yeah. This is this is a Gintama episode, that's for sure." Yes. It never reaches the crazy highs like especially considering the last episode we saw of Gintama featured him literally with a corkscrew dick fucking an alien ship down. Yes. Which but it's unfortunate that we didn't <laughs> reach those levels again because that was something else. Yeah, it was definitely something else. But this definitely feels like one of the ones where it's like, okay, we're just gonna go through some silly stuff here, but it's never gonna reach those crazy heights. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, enjoyable. It was fine. For sure. yeah, yeah, it was. It was alright. And let's talk about something that is one hundred percent. Yeah, this is an episode again, Tama. Episode one twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> entering the final chapter. Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what it's about. Uh, it is, uh, they're coming in, they're like, okay, so we're ending the series now, um, alright, we're ending it all, (laughs) 
for by and they really play the end credits basically right after the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're like we can't just have dead air, so they just like reminisce. It's just another reminiscing episode, <laughs> like all the other ones. Uh, mm-hmm. They even go back literally to episode one again, and Kentucky comments like we have to start reminiscing about <laughs> other things. We can't just keep going back to that. And the guy was like, "Okay, let's go to when I show up." Then. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Yeah, they go to her, which is the same thing they did the last, the uh, last. Week. And he's like, please remember other things. And that's basically. I mean, that's it's just a it's a recap clip episode. Yeah, it and is. anytime they cut to like quote unquote new stuff, it's like a still shot of the outside of the Odd Jobs building while they're talking. It is, but funny enough, there is actual new footage here because we never saw the Odd Jobs versus Shins and Gumi stuff because that was in the Jump Festa anime tour. So that was never in a previous episode. The one where they're playing the rock paper scissors game. Oh, really? I could have swore that was in a previous episode. No, I don't. I don't think so because I remember. I would have remembered I us feel talking. Like I about remember it. the Kagura versus. Okay, that, uh, they they oh, they fought yeah. each other in the the bug episode, but they never did it in that way. Okay, so that was definitely new yeah, stuff. It, that must have been it. Yeah, but damn, it was. It sure was an episode of Gintama. It was one hundred percent. Sure did be happening. In Things it. happen. I always enjoy when an ED cuts in three minutes. In. This beginning bit here, where they're <laughs> trying so hard to be like, "All right." The funniest part is when they go like, "It's literally six minutes in. It's nothing. Nothing has happened. It's just been a still shot of this and the ED." And it hits six minutes, and Kagura goes, all right, everyone, let's reconvene after an ad break. We made it into six minutes. <laughs> and it's like, wait, what? <laughs> and the ad, the ad break hits, and I'm like, god damn it. <laughs> this is... If this was any other show, I'd be so unbelievably angry, but they've done this so much. They are, they're so blatant with how lazy they want to be with this, to the point where I'm also positive all the footage they use is from previous episodes, just restrung with new audio. <laughs> Probably, to be honest. Yep, that's what it definitely feels like and looks like to me, so... Uh, but yeah, the, I always kind of have a nice time watching these. It's For some reason, the, the bits here where it's just a still picture of this house are the funniest to me, which is why I also include it at the beginning of every Gintama where we where we do a, like a ramble, or if we start rambling a little bit too hard, I just put up a picture of that house, because it's the uh-huh. perfect just signifier of nothing is happening but there's people- nothing going on right now it's just audio just two people talking yep yep basically just like you know what sit back enjoy the silly it's good to go but yeah i liked um them cutting into the ed i like them talking about the titles because they start talking about the real reason it's so hard to remember gintama is that all the titles are like weird things like nobody with natural yeah, wavy hair was the funniest joke in the episode where he was like, honestly, I can't really reminisce because I have no idea what any of these episode titles are. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh yeah, do you... like, and then uh, Kagura is like, my debut episode was called. Please remember that sometimes Jump comes out on Sundays. She's like, what is that supposed to mean? It's like, I think that's just trying to be nice. <laughs> I think that's just giving a nice, <laughs> one. which is very funny. Um. I like seeing the, the the stuff the 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 stuff we hadn't seen before from like the Jump Festa stuff was pretty nice. I like the bit where uh, Kagura and Okita are just going back and forth so hard. It's like the it, they simultaneously are hitting each other with the hammer and then also removing the helmet at the exact same time. They're like basically DBZ fighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when they're like with the, the and then Kagura tackles him onto the ground and starts like punching him. In yeah, the face. at some point they they like get rid of the hammer and they're just like, oh no, they got rid of the hammer and <laughs> they're just like, yeah, they're like they're not even playing the game. <laughs> no, just straight up uh, exchanging blows. Um, I like the bit where a Kondo comes in and says like, my character was always cool. Like he's like, I may be a gorilla now, but when I debuted, I was pretty cool. And then they show him, they immediately show his debut, which is not actually his debut. It's when he's asking about the ass hair stuff. <laughs> his debut was a little bit beforehand where Okita was talking, not Okita, it was Hijikata was hyping him up like to an insane degree. And then it cuts to this stuff. <laughs> But before then, they were hyping him up to be a cool dude, and then immediately just like threw that out the window <laughs> with him asking about the, the ass hair stuff. But yeah, uh, I liked seeing that bit. I liked seeing Tay just completely fucking smash his head in, 
she like starts Buddhist chanting. Yeah, like she just destroys him. Yeah, she's like, I don't. <laughs> that's not how the game is played. He's safe. He has the helmet, but she just completely destroys his head. It's done. And yeah, at one point, um, Kentoki and uh, Hijikata get in so insanely drunk that they have a sword fight. And uh, Kentoki, <laughs> he slices a tree in half, and he goes, "It's okay. I used the back. I used the back, <laughs> back of my." Lord, and the tree like destroyed, absolutely destroyed. And then Hijikata is having rock paper scissors with uh, Sadaharu, mm-hmm. and he's fucking losing because he's yeah, only. He's like, Why do you keep throwing rock? <laughs> oh, that was good. It was a good bit, but yeah, it was a recap. Uh, <laughs> very easy recap, by the way. Apparently, this was manga chapter seventeen back in the day. <laughs> Did they really have a? a- Maybe it's so- back into seventeen for the <laughs> for the finale here. I guess so. Yeah, I know, I know that it's all over the place, but that's insane if it is. It's also really funny to think of a recap in <laughs> seventeen chapters into a manga. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's it for episode one twenty five. We're both of the same agreement here. It's just like a, ah, this is it another. Sure episode. <laughs> was. Yep, a, Gint- a Gintama recap episode. Yes, just uh, good. Funny enough, not as good as some of the other recap ones, because some of the other recap ones are insane with how low, amazing effort they are. Like the one that had the fake trailer for the Benny Zakura arc. Yes. 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 I definitely feel like in a lot of the recaps, if it was any other series with recaps, I'd be like, eh, it's a recap. But for them, they go so crazy with recaps, I actually feel like this is one of the weaker recaps that they've done in the series. Yeah, well, because, like, there was a couple good jokes, but not very many, and it was just kind of... Yeah, you know. Again, very good for us who are just kind of settling back in here and being like, alright, let's just, you know, get readjusted to the world of Gintama once again. It's very good for that, that's for sure. And let's move on. I also like the bit where they kept showing the episode titles before the episode, and I actually made me think, was that really the name of that episode? (laughs) Because they were just so crazy and bizarre looking at them but no i think they that that was legit the name of the episodes okay let's move on to episode uh 126 126 some things can only be conveyed through the written word which is the start of the correspondence arc which is a tiny little three episode arc here uh go ahead zen this one actually requires some form of there's actual plot in this one yeah yes there are (laughs) buckle up (laughs) <laughs> uh, there is lore here. Uh, so the fan club is on the beach. The 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 uh, Sue fan club, mm-hmm. the one that Shimpachi is the leader of, is on the beach doing this big dramatic dance number because they're going to a concert for her. Um, and now that and, she's big, they can't fuck around yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's serious shit now. Exactly. Uh, and they get pissed off because one of them's been texting uh, this girl, and they're like, that's you know, not cool or whatever because, you know, we have to, like, sue the most. And then someone's like, hey, but what if we have a girl club for the fan club, obviously? Mm -hmm. Um, And so they go to talk about it, and they end up throwing, like, their phones into the ocean. And they're like, we don't don't need to talk to girls. We're only going to talk to (laughs) the (laughs) Buchan forever. Um they end up finding a message in a bottle that Shimpachi reads, and it's like, uh, I forget exactly what it is, but it's just, it's like a message for she, oh, you asking know, for a friend. It's like, yeah, it's like a classic romance message in a bottle kind of thing. Um, so they, uh, he takes that back and Immediately goes back on everything he literally just yeah, said. <laughs> completely gives up on everything that he had just said a moment ago. Um, For the second time, this has also happened. Because this also happened with the cat girl. <laughs> it did, yeah. <laughs> um, Ty asked Gintoki, like, what's what's going on with all of this? Uh, there's all these crumpled up papers, <laughs> and so Gintoki thinks he's masturbating. Um, Feverishly. Yes, and then uh, it ends up that he's just writing letters. He's trying to write a letter back to the person in the bottle. Um, Gintoki brings him porn. <laughs> he's like, here you go. And then, <laughs> the one doesn't even look in. He just kind of goes, here you go. <laughs> yep. 
And then <laughs> Shabbat's like, what have you been telling my sister? And she brings him, like, dessert and lotion. But there's a hole in the dessert. It's clearly not for eating. <laughs> it's... This is maybe the most embarrassed I've ever felt for him, because it was a real sign of just like, you know what? Here. I'm not going to judge you. I'm your sister. I love you. Here you go. Yeah, what she says, um, I'll love you no matter what you become. <laughs> and then leaves. Uh, and then, um, so Kentucky's like, alright, well, I'll help you out. Uh, and he reads it, he's like, this sucks. And Shippashi's <laughs> like, you know, isn't, isn't youth about, you know, all this emotional shit and he's like this is destiny i found this and everything and so they they try to write a better letter back and they're like taking pictures of him and stuff and gintoki's like no we need to just all we need is the glasses because the glasses <laughs> are 95 percent of what you are and the rest of you is three percent water and two percent carpet <laughs> <laughs> and there's they end up taking a bunch of pictures that's like the glasses in a tree and like on a rock and yep. stuff. Trying to find the perfect place for them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Sogo shows up um, and attacks Shimpachi for some reason because they do end up sending the letter to... Uh, well, they, they like throw the letter back into the water and the, the sisters find it. Um, and it turns out that the one who wrote it is the one with the glasses, not the one that uh, Shimpachi thinks it is. Um, and the photo that Gintoki had put in with it was of Okita attacking <laughs> Shimpachi. So they think it's Okita and not Shimpachi because he's getting just, like killed in the photo. Yeah, he's like the main focus and Shimpachi's like just at the bottom being attacked. Yeah, he's like down in the bottom, literally being attacked with a sword. Yeah. And also, we don't know her name until I think the end of the, the this arc. But her the the sister, the one with glasses, is Karara, and then the one without it, the one that's the picture, is Urara, I believe. So yeah, we and go. Urara we learn earlier, but Kirara we don't meet. We don't learn her name until the very end of the last episode. Yeah, till the very end. But yeah, that's this one. Uh this episode. Let's go. So. First of all, there's a new OP and ED in this, uh, starting in this one. Uh, I believe it is uh, number 6 and number 11, which is pretty nice. Always nice to get a new OP and ED. Don't really have any specific opinions about it just yet. I need to have a lot okay. more time with it. Yeah, yeah, it seemed okay. A lot of the times when I'm hearing these OP and EDs, I'm wondering to myself, how would this sound in a fight? Because <laughs> I feel like a vast majority of them either are used in a fight of some kind or during a really cool scene. So I'm kind of like, it's kind of like setting a mood. Uh, they do that in an extremely well fashion. So that's what I'm currently trying to feel it. But yeah, they seem pretty okay so far. Um, I liked all the bits about... Uh, well, first of all, when they open up with the fan club, I realized that this was something I was going to mention last episode. I'm almost positive that the Sue fan club has more animation in their dance than she does. Because if you pay attention to her dances and stuff, it has not changed since when she first debuted. She has used basically <laughs> the same animation for dance and poses <laughs> since she debuted but this fan yeah, club i remember thinking this fan dance is like crazy animated it is it's more animated than she is <laughs> if you pay it because if you actually look back and see what she does she does the same like kind of sway motion back and forth and that's it but yeah her <laughs> her fan club has an insane <laughs> level of detail to their dance compared to her which i thought was funny um i liked it that it was actually by email because I think that's actually the the funniest difference between probably our uh, culture and theirs is that ours at this time would have been heavy into texting and probably still is. But theirs was apparently email, which is really funny to think about, like emailing someone back and forth a whole bunch. <laughs> um, and yeah, once again, I like it. Anytime Shinpachi completely throws away all is super hypocritical. And this is one of those bits. <laughs> Where he's just, just a, like, nope. 
Especially because he's so aggro on the dudes in his own fan club, where he's just, like, attacking them by the nose. And it just goes into these, like, long, about, like, this is all we need. This is, you know, there's a reason why we don't allow any women in here, because it's forbidden to talk to females in private. <laughs> because, technically speaking, he does speak to women, just not in private. He never has any private cor- correlation with them. Uh, and then he immediately throws it away when he sees this picture of uh, the pretty girl. And he's just like, oh, yeah, you know what? I forgot. There's other pretty women <laughs> that exist. <laughs> uh, him at hold up in his house trying to figure out a way to answer back is very uh, telling. Because I also have no fucking idea how I would ever respond. I have a, like terrible times making emails in general where I just don't know how to respond back to someone. Where I'm like, okay, I need to think of something to say here. And then, like, 20 minutes would have passed. I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> I really, at this point, now it feels like I'm ignoring them, which is not what I'm doing. But I literally don't know how to answer this. Um, so it was nice seeing him kind of go through that. Uh, the idea that he's just been feverishly masturbating the entire time. <laughs> and Kentucky is just like, oh, no, he's just at that age where he's doing this. And the fact that he comes in with, like, this magazine, but he doesn't actually want to look him in the eye just in case he's doing what he thinks he's doing. Yeah, he's just, like, (laughs) hands it through the door. Yeah, and then the other part that's really funny is that after he opens the door to confront him, there's, like, he brought, like, three women with him. He's like, oh, never mind, he's not into this. Never mind, everyone, you can all leave now. It's okay. He's like, where did you find these women? (laughs) Because they were, like, all dominatrixes, I think. Mm -hmm, Uh, They were, yeah. (laughs) So perfect. And then, of course, when uh, Tay brings out the stuff for him, like the lotion, like brings out food, lotion, and then some kind of substance that clearly has a hole in it, which is what (laughs) the implications of what she thinks he's actually going to do with it are amazing. And it's kind of surprising that they got away with this joke when it came out. (laughs) Uh, But also, again, showing that amazing side of Tay that she's a loving woman and she's willing to accept Shimpachi for what he is, regardless of what kind of weird maniac uh, Gintoki has convinced her that he's becoming. Uh, good side to her right there. And yeah, them trying to write this letter was really funny to me. Like, I liked what, showing all the pictures of The Rock and how he's he tries to hype him up so much and how much he's just... There's like a one point where he's like, oh yeah, here, here's how you answer back in a letter. And he writes it like the back of a novel. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I got new glasses today. And then later on, he he, he writes it as if he was the, a blurb in Shonen Jump. <laughs> where he has, like, the little glasses and it's, like, on the side. Like, on, like the, the, the author manga notes at the end, which is really funny. Um, and, yeah, all the bit here with him taking all the different pictures with the glasses is funny. Them basically saying, you're just glasses, you're not anything else. Especially after he get he hypes himself up, he's like, alright, here I am, dressed up, without the glasses. He, like, tells him, because, like, the most important thing is, like, the soul. And I think you have a good soul, Shimpachi. And so he, he's like, alright, you know what, I'm gonna do it. And he dresses up as Elvis to, like, get ready to take the pictures, and he just gets completely fucking ignored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot he dressed up like Elvis. He does. He's like so ready to put on this image for himself and he gets immediately shit on. <laughs> Saying like, hey, whatever, you ain't shit. It's fine. It's the glasses. That's all we need. And yeah. I liked it. I also like the bit with Okita here, which is uh, really... Uh, there's a lot of things going on here, but it's important for them to realize and say uh, Okita is extremely attractive. <laughs> And it's just because of his attractiveness that he's going to be able to get away with a lot of things that he does in future episodes, in the upcoming two episodes that we're going to be talking about. Yes. Uh, But I think it's always a good backdrop to say, like, oh, no, Okita, yeah, you know, (laughs) he is what he is. Yes. And, yeah, I like the... He's a good-looking individual. mm -hmm. I like the end bit here with the two sisters where it's like, oh, yeah, it's revealed that she basically has been lying too because you know this entire time what Shinpachi is be what Gintoki is doing is basically lying to this girl which seems very bad and then you at the end it reveals that a girl that looks a lot like Shinpachi (laughs) which looks like a female version of Shinpachi with the glasses on uh is doing basically the same Mm -hmm. also lying yes also lying and has not told her sister this is what that she included her included her photo in it so that's the end of this episode. Do you have any specific thoughts about it? Then? What do you feel about it? Uh, no, it was pretty good. The first one, I think, was the weakest one of the three. Mm. Um, I do think it gets better as we go deeper in. It was it was okay. Yeah, it's a good setup for it. Yeah. Uh, 
for sure. Uh, now, let's go on to episode 127, which is called, holy shit, they didn't translate this. Uh, <laughs> Moshi Sometimes D. Sometimes you must meet to understand. Oh, thank God. Sometimes you must meet to understand. <laughs> I was looking at the bold and it said like, Moji de Shika Suwaru Mono Gawaru. And I'm just like, I don't know what the fuck I just said. I don't think I said it correctly. I really hope I didn't accidentally say something extremely <laughs> terrible. And if I did, I apologize. The accidental cursed translation. Exactly. That's what I'm constantly fearing. But let's get into it. Zen, tell us what this one's about. So they find the letter uh, that Shimpachi basically sent back, um, sort of sent back. It's not a very coherent uh, letter exchanging thing they've got going on. I guess they just leave it in a bottle in the in the yeah, and they just keep like exchanging them back and forth. Um, Mm. And the glasses sister, who is Kirara again, um, Mm. reveals that oh, I sent your photo, not my own, because I think you're really pretty, and I don't think I'm very pretty at all. And the sister's like, kind of fine with it. Like, she doesn't seem to care that much. Um, And she's like, well, why don't we keep talking to this person and, you know, try to get you a friend, basically. Uh, Try to to be friends with him. Um, So they get one back, and Gintoki's like, oh, great. There's more of these. <laughs> He's like not into it at all. Um, it almost makes it feel like he was actually sabotaging this. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, because I think the letter says that they want to meet up. Uh, mm-hmm. They want to like meet in real life. And Shimpachi is stressed because he realizes that a person almost certainly thinks that he is Okita, not Shimpachi because of the photo. Um and Toki's like, no, you're in the picture. <laughs> you're like, you're right here. <laughs> and it shows the picture, and it's just Okita, like, splashing him with a sword. And I believe he says, I'm barely in it. I'm the one being killed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but... Uh... Kondo then comes in and, and starts also helping, because he's like, I'm the, I'm the love expert. <laughs> uh, both of them are like, you are not. <laughs> and he's like, no, I am. Um, and so he talks about, like, all the, the, the girl, like, communication that he's had, and it's, like, all been, uh, anonymous people online, and he's like, oh, I gave them a bunch of money. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're like, did you get scammed? And he's like, no. No, I didn't. Um. <laughs> Poor condo. And so <laughs> They're going to write another letter. And uh, Gintoki's like, there's no way that you could write a better letter than me. And Kondo's like, of course I can. So they start writing the letter, and it's just uh, Kondo, like, talking about Shimpachi's sister. And the whole thing is just about, like, how hot he thinks Pai is. Um, They they end up kind of agreeing on a letter, uh, and they, they send it off. And then Kirara writes back, still posing as her sister, but talking about herself, saying, oh, I have um, a sister who's uh, ill as well, yada yada, and I, you know, she never really sees anyone, and all that stuff. And uh, they read through the letter, and I don't remember if it's Kondo or Kintoki, but he's like, see, look what you did, now she's talking about her sister, <laughs> give a shit about this. Which is really funny after this is very clearly she's writing about herself. Yeah, and Gintoki's like, who gives a shit about this? <laughs> um, Kichikata shows up as well and starts helping for reasons I don't remember. I think he's just like shows up for Kondo and then Kondo's like, hey, you should help. And he's like, all right. Yeah, he um, did. He was 100% there just to pick up Kondo because he's like, you actually yeah. have a job. You need to go <laughs> do your job. <laughs> And yeah, he's like, so you, yeah, you should come and help. So they start writing another letter again. And Hichikata's like, oh, you see, this is a this is a type. And they beep it out. Because I guess they don't want you to know what blood type is. Apparently blood types that he's talking about. Yeah, no, um, he starts saying, like, he starts talking shit about her blood type. 
He says, like, yeah. she talks only about herself and monopolizes the conversation, then thinks it's going well. And then it's on the bracket on the top, it says, we are not allowed to broadcast content that may encourage prejudice and stereotypes against different blood types. <laughs> yeah, and he's, he's talking about, like, how much her blood type sucks. Um, yeah, there's, like, they're selfish uh, people of these blood types. They bleep out the blood type. <laughs> So they they try to redo a letter, and Gintoki makes this horrible suggestion, uh, and then Kondo gives a suggestion as well that's also horrible. And so Hichikata starts to write, and he has like a Death Note scene moment where like his eyes shine, and he starts writing really fast, and there's like light everywhere where the pen goes. Yeah, he. It's basically that version of you know how. Um, obviously, I saw it a whole bunch after Spider Verse, where the guy's like writing down like some some words down, and there's like fire coming out of the pen. He's basically yeah, entered it's basically that. Yeah, he's entered um, a writing to women. He, they're like taking it as like, oh my god, he's 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 writing the words of the gods. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And it, he even like gets super like. Uh, like the cerebral about it because he writes at the end like i just really want to meet you and then he erases it so that it gives the impression that he's shy because he wrote something else and then had to erase it because he was too shy to say it but then he forgets to re- to erase the letter that or the part that kondo wrote in that was like i'm super turned on or something it says when i think about your sister i get turned on <laughs> yeah, that's what it was <laughs> And he forgot to remove it. Um, when they get the letter, Arara freaks out because she's like, "This guy's a freak!" Like, go on, talk to this guy. <laughs> He's one hundred percent. likes it. Um, yeah, because the like, sister is her. <laughs> yeah, and uh, she likes it, and then she's also like, "I feel like I have so many friends because every time he writes me a letter, it feels like a different person wrote the letter." <laughs> he might have multiple personalities. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then they get a letter back and they, they stay they still want to meet and it ends up being like okay with the, the pervy sentence from Kondo and so he like freaks out about it and he like gets really <laughs> upset and he's like no I will not you're too young um, is, yeah don't get turned on until you're 20 is what yeah what he once says. you're 20 you can get turned on <laughs> And then, so they're they're at the same meeting place they always go to. It's the exact same place where they did like the um, fruit punch samurai or whatever. It is one hundred percent. Yeah, it is yeah. <laughs> the, the, the fruit punch. Same, <laughs> same statue. Um, I think it's the spot they use for this every time because I think they do this with the cat girl too. They do. Yeah, it's a whenever they need to go somewhere, they meet up at the. Whenever they have fruit to meet punch. someone, yeah, at this statue. Um. So the sister the the glasses sister and the regular one well, the regular one the two sisters are there uh and urara is telling kirara like you know you you don't realize that you're also really pretty you need to be confident you need to do whatever comes natural to you the reason that you're so nervous and afraid is because you're trying to be someone else and it's you know you don't you don't know if you're pulling it off um and so she goes okay do whatever comes natural to me and then she sprints away like full speed <laughs> And though, so then our people arrive, and Gintoki brought uh, Okita to make him pretend to be Shimpachi because of the picture. Mm-hmm. And Shimpachi's like, this is a horrible fucking plan. Why did we do all this work? And then he gets to go on the date. Uh, and then they, um, Okita like, agrees, like, I'm here because I owe Gintoki. Or, like, yeah. And then something about, I think, the Shitsengumi, like, told him to do it. Yeah, yeah uh, there's a new bylaw in the Shinsengumi added by Kondo, which is uh, hate everything about the odd jobs, except for Shimpachi. <laughs> <laughs> if Shimpachi needs help, help him out. That's like the the rule is basically. <laughs> oh, God. And then. Uh, so the the uh, Urara is missing her sister because she ran away. Uh, and then Okita is there also. So they end up leaving and uh, like spying on them for a bit, and then Kirara shows up and is like, "Hey, hey, hey!" Yeah, he and... says. Yeah, they say they say uh, Gintoki says Shimpachi's name, and then that says like, "Did you just say Shimpachi?" And then it's revealed that there at the end that 
she knows. Yeah. And then that's that's the cliffhanger is that they they bump into each other right here. Mhm. There you go. This episode Oh man, this one's actually really enjoyable. <laughs> now that yeah, we actually I go, it was good. I thought it was really, it was a nice breath of like genuine funny because I think the last few were kind of forced. The jokes weren't super good, um, but the, the yeah, masturbation the, humor got a little old for me in the last one because it was like the, the joke they went to like four times constantly. Um, the humor in this one I thought was really good. This one was really maybe it also it just comes down to the idea of like the the relatability of just like. Uh, a bunch of dudes who are very bad at writing letters to women are terrible with women coming together trying to figure out how to talk to a woman. <laughs> and it ends up being super funny. The, the All the bits with Kondo where he's like super going into detail about how much he loves Ty. Tay. And then he's like, you need to cut that out, man. Like, you're going on too long, and it's just about my sister. She's going to think I have a weird relationship with my sister if I go in that deep about her. And he's like, all right, I can I can summarize my entire thing. Because he, like he was going on for, like, two minutes long about how all her positives. And then he's like, okay. Oh, yeah, his summary is just that uh, <laughs> I get turned on. <laughs> yeah. She turns me on. <laughs> my yeah, sister, that's... she turns me on. <laughs> uh-huh. He's like, no, absolutely not. We're not doing that. But yeah, them constantly writing all these, uh, going back and forth about what the best way to like approach a woman is, is really funny. Uh, when Hijikata shows up and he d- drops the fire line and they're just like all in awe on it. And which, to be fair, he does drop a really nice letter. That- it is really good. It's super fake and like cheesy, but it's good. It is for yes. what they're trying to do. For what it's way better do. than what they were doing before. If this was a cheesy uh, romance, that would just go perfectly good as like a good byline to just use. But the fact that they're saying like, "Oh my god, it's he's amazing. He's <laughs> writing letters." Yeah, the- they're like losing their mind over this. Like how good this is. How good this is. Yes, which brings a real like level of <laughs> scumbaggery that I like. <laughs> Uh, that feels really nice. And just at the end, when he's like, "Oh," because he goes like, because at the end of it, when he's done writing, he puts it in an envelope and he goes, "Shimpachi, deliver it now." And he goes, "Yes." And then he like runs off to go deliver the letter. And also the fact they never tell Shimpachi that they never r- remove the part where Kondo said what I think about, line, yeah. <laughs> about the sister. They never they never removed it so that when he shows up he's like oh it went so well like all three of them are like expecting him to get fully rejected because they yeah, left they're in... like it was <laughs> they're like well we left in a line that said when i think about your sister i get turned on this is it it's over my guy <laughs> there's no coming back yeah, from this the beginning of the next one where they're like uh all sitting around and they're like oh this is gonna be fucking terrible and he's kind of like don't blame me for this shit you wrote in here they're don't. like all prepared for him to come back in tears Yep, and then when he says, like, oh, no, she wants to meet up, and then their first thought is, like, she's she's down for that? Like, what? Like, then they turn, it turns into a completely different thing, because obviously their reaction is, no, ill, this is gross. <laughs> you should stop talking to this man immediately. Uh, but the sister's just like, no, I think... <laughs> because I think it's specifically related to her, she's like, no, I need to kind of see him. I'm okay with it. But then also just, like, they kind of establish, like, she's a very lonely person. So the fact that yes. this person... <laughs> she also... I think she might also be thinking he has mental defects because he has multiple yeah, personalities. He's, like, deranged. <laughs> yeah, that every single letter that he's written to her feels like it's been written by, like, different people. Because at this point, there's at least four different dudes talking to her. <laughs> I mean, they basically all have been written by different people, because, like, Gintoki wrote the first one, then they, like, collaborated with Kondo on the second one, and then Hichikata wrote the third one. Yeah, every single one of them has been a, a, a different person. <laughs> this is really funny. But, yeah, the 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 way Kondo is thinking immediately, like, she must be some kind of freak if she's into that. She's going to bring in the sister. No, nah, I'm not allowing it, my guy. You're 16. Slow your yeah, fucking he, roll. He, like, changes teams. He changes teams of meeting. He's like, nah, 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 son. You're 16. You can't handle all of that. I'm yeah, forbidding which is it. It's funny because he, he changes teams in response to her accepting his own gross, like, attitude. <laughs> it is. It's, it's his own, like, freak shit. And he's like, no. No. We can't have anyone else exposed to this. Yeah, he's like, I'm your brother in law, and I forbid it. He's like, you're not my brother in law. You're not even close. 
Because <laughs> he says that he's he's doing it under the guise, as your future brother-in-law, I can't let this happen. Come back and be turned on when you're 20. And then Hijikata brings up the very salient point. He's like, I don't think that... I don't think that's possible, my guy. <laughs> that's just the way, not the way humans work. He's like, no, shut up. It's gonna be fine. And yeah, I like that at the end where they do the setup. And they leave it off with a, like, okay, what happens next? Because I was actually fully expecting the next episode to be nothing but, like, misconstrue it. But they immediately tell you, like, oh, no, no, she she knows what's up. So you don't have to do... It's not... A, I, what I thought was going to happen was an entire episode of Okita with the sister fucking up the date. And then getting her to like her. But that all that stuff just happens off screen <laughs> completely off screen yeah <laughs> yep i liked also the original plan here which is that um okita is gonna treat her so badly that shimpachi is gonna show up and no they they were gonna be rivals and then like he intercepted the letter and he put himself in there instead of shimpachi <laughs> and then it's like uh okita was okay he's like that yeah i can't really follow simple i can't i can't follow complex instructions so that sounds simple enough that i can do it so it's not an issue with me it's fine and they show later on that I think <laughs> when you give him a little bit of leeway, he ends up going in completely different fucking directions than you yes, They left him alone too long. <laughs> exactly. If there's ever been a sign that you should never leave Okita alone with a woman, it's the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this was a really good one. Uh, this was a lot of fun. And again, a lot of it has to deal with it's just a very funny scenario that they have on here. And they have a lot of good back and forth with each other. Like, at this point, this many episodes in, it's just fun to see the characters, like, try and do something very simple. Like, the very simple idea of, okay, Shinpachi, he has a girl he likes, he needs to write a letter. He doesn't know how. So then they introduce three characters that also probably don't really know how, and they figure out a way to... idea what they're doing. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I think it works out pretty well. Uh, what do you feel, Zen? Yeah, it was good. This one was really good. Uh, the whole bit where she runs away at the end and shows up at the end, I thought was really funny when she just sprints away. Um, <laughs> just like full speed dust cloud sprinting out of there. Um, Okita agreeing at all to help, I thought was funny because it's Okita. So that by design is immediately funny. Yeah. Uh, it's a good episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fact that the Shinsengumi now have a law that just says, you can help. <laughs> Ignore them, but if he asks for help, then help him. <laughs> <laughs> then you're good. All right, and let's get on to the final episode of this arc. Oh, episode 128, which is called, There Are Also Things That Can't Be Understood Even After Meeting. Uh, so uh, it's, not, it's not just basically the same one no it's just like one word difference there are also things that can't be understood without meeting up and there are things that you still won't understand after meeting up okay yeah these titles <laughs> they get to be mm -hmm. go ahead yeah. Zen. so uh it starts with shimpachi um apologizing to kirara and saying that you know oh there, there was a i was being deceitful i apologize and kirara's like oh that's okay, and she and Gintoki end up making this, like, fucking plan together for Shimpachi to impress Urara. Um, Shimpachi does not necessarily like the idea, but they're like, no, we're gonna, we're gonna make this thing where uh, Gintoki is going to pretend to kidnap Kirara, and then he's gonna run in and fake murder uh Okita, mm -hmm. who and then Shimpachi will murder him uh, and be the hero. <laughs> uh, they they walk up and he ends up uh, supposedly uh, he's supposed to bring her here and he's like I okay, so just bring you know, escort her to where we're going and he ends up bringing her there on a, a collar and a chain <laughs> and they're like sitting with this old man while she's fighting one of the cats on the ground. Yeah, because it's time for food. And he feeds her like a fucking cat. Uh, and then, uh, Kentucky's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> the, the funniest joke in this for me is the first time when, like, uh, it reveals that she, like, oh, I think it's after she kicks Shimpachi. Shimpachi runs in. Um, and she kicks him. And Kentucky just goes, my god. <laughs> Like, what the fuck did you do? She's uh, been thoroughly like, disciplined. They're like, okay, 
fuck. Uh, we're just gonna do the plan anyway. So, um, Gintoki, like, pretends he's gonna sell the other sister. And the, the Urara just doesn't care at all. Because all she gives a shit about is Okita now. Um, this upsets Kirara, because it seems like she doesn't care. So Kirara runs away. Um, Shinpachi goes after her. And then Kondo and Hijikata are just in the car, like, talking. And they almost hit her. Uh, because she's in the middle of the street. And they don't know who she is, because they they didn't have a picture of her. The picture was of the other sister. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually... Urara, Okita, and Gintoki show up, and Urara kicks out the windshield of the car and, like, steals it. <laughs> she's like, I've secured the car. And Gintoki is, like, coming around to it, because he's like, you know, she's actually pretty useful. <laughs> he's, like, getting more on board with it. Yeah, and she um, also does say master at the That She always refers yes. to him as master now. <laughs> yes. Um, and so, like, yeah, because they get in the car, and Gintoki's like, all right, let's go. And she's like, no, 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 no. Don't get it twisted. I don't listen to you. <laughs> I only um, listen to the master. Yeah. And so they, they end up finding uh, Kirara, because Hijikata gets in the car, and Kondo's, like, clung to one of the windows. Um, and they are going off to, like, because Hijikata and Kondo don't know that the plan didn't work the way that they thought it was supposed to go. Mm-hmm. So they're look like Shinpachi's off on his own trying to find her while the others are driving there. Uh, and they see that uh, Kirahara's on top of a building and she's going to kill herself by jumping off the building. Um, Arara tries to talk her out of it and Kirahara says, No, I, I feel too bad. I'm going to jump. And she keeps going, like, I'm going to kill myself, like, over <laughs> and over again. I'm killing myself. <laughs> yeah. And then they're, like, talking. Um, on the ground, it's Gintoki. I, I think it's the the Shinsengumi trio and Gintoki at the same time. Yeah, oh, they're, and they're talking about the blood type thing again. Yeah. And every time they're like, "Oh yeah, she must have this blood type because she's like selfish and bitchy and doesn't listen." Yeah, because after <laughs> she says, "I'm gonna kill herself," that's when Hijikata says, "See, I told her <laughs> those blood yeah, types." I told you guys. <laughs> Women with these and blood types, am I right? <laughs> every time they say something. It's like an arrow sticks through her, then, but every time they say it, and uh, Kondo is like on the ground weeping, and they're like, "Why are you crying?" And like, "I'm not crying," and I forget what he says. He After says he says he's not crying. He, I think he says because the reveal is that he shares the same blood type as her. Oh, so. that's right. So he's his, his feelings got hurt too. <laughs> yeah, by what they were saying. Um. And then she is, like, she moves up to, like, step up onto the ledge to jump, and she slips and starts to fall. And she and Kondo's like, did I say something wrong? What happened? <laughs> but this is maybe uh, the funniest and- animation ever. Because he starts so she- saying, after he says, it's my blood type, she goes, I'm killing myself. And then she very quickly falls. <laughs> yeah, like, immediately. Yeah. <laughs> and so Kentoki, like, runs. Um, and jumps off after her, and Okita throws the chain to him to use as like a a repelling rope mm-hmm. down the side of the building, and he sprints down the side of the building to catch her, and uh, he figures out that like oh, you know you were gonna you were gonna jump off and have Shimpachi save you so that he could be the hero and impress your sister. Bad news, Shimpachi can't do any of this shit. <laughs> And then, you know, they kind of have their emotional ending where he's like, or she was like, oh, you know, um, even though the letters kind of helped me feel less alone, now that he knows the truth, he won't care about me anymore. And then Gintoki tells her to look and Shimpachi's on the building on the other side of the street. And he holds up some signs that are like, I want to know your name and I want us to like be friends the right way and like talk to each other normally again. uh, Because I want to write a letter to you, not to, you know, the sister you're pretending to be and kintoki uh kicks off the side of the building and then like action movie kicks <laughs> through one of the windows so they can get the paper inside so she can write a response um which which harkens back to the the recap where we had where it's like why does kintoki have so many cool intros i think that's what congress <laughs> is like he just has like a buttload of cool intros 
which is really uh, she able does. To... She writes her name down to him, but she tells him it's Kirara, and they uh, they agree that they're going to start corresponding normally. And then we go back to uh, Otai opening up his door again with the crumpled papers all over the floor. Uh, and she's doing, like, the same bit she did the first time, where she's like, I brought you your snacks. <laughs> and then she goes over, because he's asleep uh, at the desk, and she goes over to look at what he's doing. And he's writing another letter to her, and it's a new picture with, like, the two sisters and then the friends that they've made. And then that's the end of the episode. <laughs> but the, and the older sister is still wearing the collar that Okita put on her. She still has In this fucking collar. <laughs> This woman has been changed. She is not the same anymore. It's okay. Okay, it has completely ruined this woman. It's such a cute ending. And then when I saw that, I fucking died. It was so fucking funny. It was like, oh my fucking god. And yeah, and then we get a preview for next episode. But for now, we'll talk about. The- what it's, we have. It's also really funny because when she's on the roof, she's not wearing it. No, when she's, she's like trying to talk their sister out of jumping. She's not wearing it anymore. So at some point, she went and got it back. She did. She seems to be happy with herself now. I don't know if she, that she's with Okita still, but I'm assuming no. But maybe she's just like happy in this new life, or maybe she's been just changed so much. He was barely with her. She was like with her for maybe like an hour tops, and that was enough to completely drive her down this path but okay let's get I mean, into it is okita i guess it is him he is the ultimate uh masochist he he is him <laughs> he is he is him he is hashtag him 100 this is the man <laughs> who will ruin <laughs> you he's like the bad guy he literally is actually now that i think but he is the bad guy of a like a sh- a shoujo manga <laughs> he definitely he's the bad guy of this arc he is for sure 100. Even though he doesn't even really do anything, he's like put into the situation. But he, <laughs> the second he's into the situation, he's like, "I'm gonna make this as bad for everyone else as possible." <laughs> I love the, the scene. I think it's in. Uh, I think it's in this one where he's like scratching her chin, and he looks like fucking Satan. He does, yeah. That's the the shot I'm thinking of. Was like, okay, this is 100. percent Yeah, is. he's like glowing purple, and he's got like an evil smile on his face. Yeah, this is something that the 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 rent a girlfriend MC would think about. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> it's a it's a one hell of a situation, and then they follow that up with the the Gitoki as the fucking slave master. <laughs> yeah. In this fucking with outfit, the drawn on mustache and his hair slicked back. His hair slicked back. He's wearing a cape. No, he's not wearing a cape. It, that's just the the way uh, the wood looks behind. I thought he was wearing a cape in this scene, but I don't think it's a cape. Actually, no, I don't know. No, he is wearing it a cape. It might be. I'm not sure. He has a whip, too, doesn't he? He does. He has a whip and a cape, and <laughs> the sister is down, which is really good. Uh, yeah, this episode. It is one of those episodes where I was watching. I was like, this was made... In, like, the 2009s, because there's no way you could get away with this today. (laughs) Mainly, the the stuff where he does with the sister where he, like, trains her, you could get away with that today. That's not an issue. The fact that a lot of the end gag has to deal with, I'm going to kill myself, (laughs) is the bit where I think it would probably be like, hey, we, you know... Because there, there is a lot of gags related to this. And the idea is that it makes a lot more sense once you realize, okay, she's not actually going to kill herself. She was just all a plot to try and get make Shimpachi look cool. Uh, even if she is extremely sad about her situation. But that those bits there where she's just up in the... Where she's just like the quick, like, I'm going to kill myself. She's like slowly getting closer to the edge every single time they show her. It's so funny. And then when she actually fucking falls, it's so yeah, funny. She slips. She slips and she has like this comical fall, and then Kondo goes, "No, was it something I said? <laughs> Surely it wasn't because of me, right?" Oh, it was so funny. Uh, but yeah, this this was great. Uh, I love it when the, he gets found out. <laughs> Shibachi immediately falls. Is like, "I'm so sorry, your sister is so hot. I couldn't control myself. I lied to you." I'm so sorry. Um, which only makes it worse because, you know, at this point, you know that she's just trying to be like, have friends with her. She really likes Shinpachi. 
So I feel a little bit bad for on there. A lot of it felt like, ah, you know, he doesn't know that what he's saying probably hurts a lot to hear, but <laughs> it is a little bit sad. Um, but yeah, a lot of the bits here are funny. Everything with Okita, what he's doing with it, especially that reveal where he's just like, a change of plans, Okita, we're going to do this and you're going to end up being Marty's like, whatever, I was already only doing this to help Shinpachi. So you know what, I'll... I'll go along with it. It's fine. He goes like, okay, bring the girl over here. And then this slow reveal that he has her in a chain where he's mm-hmm. like, there's something in his hand where it's like, oh no. Like the, the re- it, it isn't like an immediate, like, okay, she's in a chain. It's like a show his fist wrapped with chain. Watch show the feet slowly dragging forward and then reveal he has put her in a collar and has completely domesticated her. And now she acts like a cat is... <laughs> In Toki's reaction, where he's literally just like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> it is... killed me. So good. And again, it's also funny when you remember that the entire time he's doing this, he knows it's a part of the Shinsengumi law that he has to help Shinpachi. <laughs> and this in no way helps him at all. <laughs> if anything, it makes it ten times worse for him. But yeah, this... It's really funny, and the, the sister at this point completely changed from the character that she was. She is now this, like, feral, like, a subservient cat woman who is, like, because she does, like, when she attacks Shinpachi, she attacks him like she would, a cat would attack a person. <laughs> With, like, her feet, mm-hmm. like, yeah. doing a double jump. Really good. Um, and, yeah, all the bits on top of the roof. The comeback to the, to the blood type. <laughs> Where they just start again talking about uh talking shit about people with blood types and the same disclaimer shows up again saying we do not have any prejudice against people with certain blood types. It's just, you know, we don't believe in that. It's okay, you're fine. And also when Gintoki saved a girl and he, she's like, I'm sorry, but Shinpachi's just not built to save you. <laughs> like the the idea that it's just like, it's okay. He'll catch me and then my sister will fall for him, and he's just like, I'm, I hate to break it to you, he ain't that guy when it comes to this. He helps in other yeah, ways. Like, you cannot. <laughs> he cannot do it. If he would, he would, but he literally can't. Uh, and I also like that bit at the end when he finally asks her name, because there is a part where he starts asking for her, and he's like, older sister, older sister, where are you? And he's like, wait, I don't even actually know her name. I never actually asked for it. And in the letter, <laughs> it isn't there. It is, it is a kind of feeling like, oh yeah, at that point, I realized I also don't know her name. <laughs> I didn't know what it was at all. And I like the bit where he just, like, starts to understand, like, a little bit more about her and why she would do the things that she does. And then the end bit with the the nice correspondent is really nice where he's just like, what's your name? And the action movie a jump kick to the window. <laughs> That was took- so out of nowhere, because I was like, oh, that's cute. There's a little emotional ending. And then he, like, kicks off the building and shatters the window. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so extra what he's doing here, but he needs to get paper to her, and that's why they do it, because they go inside there. And, you know, it's very cute. And at the end, it doesn't. it's really a... Because it's not like they immediately, like, start a uh, relationship or anything like that. They literally just become what they want, which is just to be friends, which is good enough. <laughs> And they show the correspondent, and who knows if it, anything more comes from here, because they don't really reveal anything more about what they talk to each other, but I thought it was a really nice, cute way of ending it, of like, you know what, let me actually get to know you and write letters to you, because I want to know you more, and we can be friends, and that'd be cool. So, a nice, sweet ending that features a, again, which features uh, Okita completely domesticating a woman into being some kind of feral woman <laughs> cat creature. Yeah, some kind of cat woman. <laughs> Who wears collars up until the end, which is really funny. And again, this is why I said uh, a lot of Okita's looks lets him get away with some real weird shit. Yeah, there's not a lot of uh, pushback to Okita. No, not a lot. Kind of just like, eh, you know what, he does look the type. <laughs> this does seem like, oh, that Okita. If this was literally any, literally any other man character, this man would be dead by the end of the episode. <laughs> but because, oh yeah, easily. But because it's Okita, you kind of go, ah, oh, that's silly Okita. <laughs> Manipulating yep. the women. Okita again. <laughs> the, the, the alpha to Shibachi's beta. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anything else to say, Zen? Uh, no, it was just a surprisingly cute ending. 
uh, mm. for what was pretty stupid. Very, the whole time. very dumb. <laughs> Can't but deny. It was, it was sweet at the end somehow. The, the really the penchant for Gintama at this point. It was very stupid, but somehow there's a sweet <laughs> sweetness at the end. Yeah, just like a cute nice. resolution that it probably doesn't deserve. But <laughs> you know what? Okay. I'll allow it. <laughs> I'll give it the Airbud rule. The Airbud rule. Nothing in the rule <laughs> says that an episode featuring a woman being domesticated doesn't mean it can't have a heartfelt ending. <laughs> uh, but that's the episode. So that we are done for show. No- we're recorded, Zen. Boom. We did it. It, it happened. <laughs> Ha- we're so back. We're so back, ladies and gentlemen. We're so back. Unbelievable levels of back, and I swear to you, we are already making plans to ensure that Shodan Archive is back next week. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, yeah, we, we've already discussed it. Yes, we're this continues. <laughs> we made plan. We did the thing we hate the most, which is sitting down talking to each other and actually planning instead of just fucking around. <laughs> Yeah, just the talking shit, and then be like, alright, we should probably do this. Yeah, instead of going like, you know what, here's like 30 minutes of us getting sidetracked, and oh yeah, we should <laughs> we should plan this out a little bit, shouldn't we? We should be fine. So, uh, we have the schedule for what should be the next Shonen Archive for Gintama. I believe it goes... Uh, cause this was 128. So yes, this is the way it's going to be because it's, uh, a little bit funky from here on out. Um, we're going to do episodes 129, 130, which is the Kintaro arc. And then episodes 131, 132, 133, and 134, which is the Ghost Ryokin arc. Um, the reason it's going to be six episodes is that the thing that follows up after this is another one, two, three, four, four random episodes that don't really go with anything. Those are going to be their own, um, their own thing. Uh, and then episodes 139, 140, 141, 142, 143, 144, 145, 146 is the Yoshiro in Flames arc, which is the big arc for, um, for what this season is. So that one will be its own big jumbo size because. If it is a big arc, there's no way we're going to be able to stop after five episodes. <laughs> and this That's is that, fair. Yeah, yeah that would be th- a bad time to cut. Yeah, exactly. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight episodes in this arc. So we are going to be going through all of it and going through that. So that's why we have to kind of do it like this. And even though Ghost Ryokin is four episodes and should be good enough by itself, the Kintaro arc is a two-episode arc that we're going to be putting in there. I've also heard from people that this is probably a sadder one. And after I saw the ending bit featured a dog, I can kind of understand maybe why. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's n- that's not a great sign for what's to come. And the next one is maybe the, the, the Ghost Ryokin is a little bit more of a silly arc uh i would be we are we're always very 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 cautious when it comes to mixing the super serious with the silly uh but i was told what the next specific arc after the the kintaro arc is a uh, reference to and based off of both of our likes i think it will be enough to get us through it to <laughs> not be it won't dilute dilute it i think so we should be fine so yeah next week 120 in episodes 129 130 131, 132, 133, and 134. So six episodes in total. Are you ready, Zen? Sounds good. Let's do it. Yes. Like we've said multiple times, we back. We are so back. So crazy back. Thank you very much, everyone, who waited as well. Um, We appreciate it a whole bunch. There's actually been just enough of Shonen Archive for it to be like... It's funny enough, because Shonen Archive just does just just well enough on the channel for me to go like damn people really do like Shonen Archive <laughs> I guess we'll keep on doing it which yeah, is, that the, is nice it's always good yeah it's it is good to feel that you know mm-hmm. so we will gladly keep continuing it forward even if uh, whatever roadblocks might come up we will figure out a way to continue through those roadblocks so don't worry about it even if I uh, don't say anything for it a long extended period of the time as long as I remember it, it will come back. Trust me, there's been entire series that me and Zen have done that have come back four years later because I remembered it. So don't worry. <laughs> it I w- never truly dies. Exactly. Nothing ever truly dies. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. As always, you can find Zen over on his channel. 
with uh, Shonen and Chill, which now has a new host because o- Ocean Man is now going to be focusing on Monster Hunter. Is that right? Correct. Mm-hmm. So you're here with who now? Uh, with Asa. Perfect. So you can continue hearing all the good stuff. Because uh, let me tell you, a lot of stuff is happening. There, you know, there's a lot of chicken littling going on in Shonen Jump Manga. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's pretty good to get in all the conversation and go look. Up. Yeah, you know, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of stuff going on that I think it, it warrants talking about because <laughs> it's a very interesting place that they're in. Uh, have you? No, you wouldn't be able to cover it. Oh, dude. Oh, no, we have to. Okay, you know what? We're gonna do a separate video on it because I have to bring it up because I think it. All right. It, it's gonna. It's too. I, one because I fear it would completely d- kill the monetization of this video if we started talking about it here at the end. <laughs> but uh, we'll save it for a side uh, sh- uh, show it archive thing. But anyway, okay. if you want to form some more me, you can go to my channel. Shit's going crazy in Fago. You know, we just got a Lost Belt Six. My brother fucking one up me in a multi. He pulled a classic Damn. Zen move from back in the day. All three of the new units. You know what the chances of pulling a five star and two of the featured four stars are in Fago? Very bad, I assume. Fucking low is the way I would describe it. <laughs> and he did it in two multis. Damn! Holy shit. Yeah, it was fucking insane. I didn't. I even did pretty good for how much uh, Saint Quartz I put in there. I didn't get any five stars, but I expect that as much. But his multi was fucking insane to the point where people were like, God damn, go, go Nux. <laughs> he did it. Uh, That's wild. He, I got the new character in Star Rail. Very happy about that. Yeah, I've seen you. Go, I saw that you were playing Star Rail. I'm afraid of actually playing Star Rail because if I actually it's get into so it. It's so good. It's crazy good. Yeah, I've heard, but you know. Those, those old JRPG vibes, the turn-based combat, man. Uh, I'm, I'm thriving. It does sound pretty good, but I've really gotten into a lot of Street Fighter Six, so. Beating a lot Still of Neo. On the fence about that. Still on the fence about Street Fighter Six. It's really good, dude. It's it to the point where it's actually bringing back my hope. And now I'm like, damn, you know what? If they made a new versus game, <laughs> that's how good it is. It, that it's it's reminding me, even though against my better judgment, I know I shouldn't. <laughs> I should never <laughs> care or think about like, nah, it's literally impossible to make another versus game after how badly it was handled. Not even saying the gameplay yeah, part of it. I, I mean, the actual... Happened, unfortunately. Yeah. The management part of it is just, like, was so bad that it was so mismanaged, and it was just, like... It makes it... It makes those comments made by Hungry Bugs like, I want a dev that supports the game. Motherfucker, did you see what happened to this one? <laughs> Capcom, known for fighting games, they support Teppin still. <laughs> they left Marvel vs. Yeah, Capcom Infinite they done. that, but it's still going. <laughs> It's still going. They left MVCI to fucking die. <laughs> they had to make cuts, and they said this one, unfortunately, is the one that has to go. <laughs> so you know what? The Street I Fighter mean, Six. To is, be fair, yeah. yeah, yeah. To be fair, but yeah, Street Fighter Six is good enough for me to go like, oh, this this definitely bring me back. And I'm even fighting Neo at it. And it's really good. His E Honda is fucking vicious, terrifying. Uh. And then I and then it's great because I also went uh, full. He I don't, he doesn't listen to this, so I can say it. I went DJ, and that was the one character who's just like, "What is this bullshit character <laughs> doing? All these fates, <laughs> and his legs are insanely long, but he's got insane punches. What am I supposed to do here?" He never complained when I was going Zangief and fucking insta throwing him into the air, but it was DJ was the one that finally broke him. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen a lot of shit about DJ in Street Fighter Six. Oh, he's a lot of fun. If he's... I get that, I'll probably just end up playing Ken, because that's just the kind of guy I am. Yeah, Ken's pretty cool, and he's homeless now, so you know. Yeah, you know, he's a bum now? <laughs> all his apes are gods, Zen. <laughs> 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 They're all god. He invested so hard into Street Fighter ape coin, and now it's just... The last of my apes. <laughs> of my apes and my wife. <laughs> and my <laughs> son, who's going to punch me in my dick at the end of my story mode now? Oh my god. Yeah. So you can follow all that stuff on my channel. And of course, we'll be back for more Shonen Archive hopefully next week. So say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. See you later. We don't have an ending call sign. Play me out, music.